All right, guys, let's take a look inside and see what we got. So I recommend that every guitar player have something similar to this, just a little, you know, Tupperware style container to keep all your extraneous and ancillary gear, because otherwise you're going to just have it laying all over the place on top of your amps, under your table. It's just going to get lost. You know, the cat plays with it. Next thing you know, it's under the couch. So we don't need that. So let's go through it. As you can see, the stuff on top is my frequently used uh, tools. The Ibanez, let's turn that around. The Ibanez multi-tool has uh, all the pretty much all the wrenches you need, and it's even got a nice little measuring gauge there for uh, check your string height, stuff like that. It's pretty cool, so I use that a lot. Everybody has to have a screwdriver because you know screws. This one's great. Got. Uh, Quick switch, a couple sides there, a couple different, uh, it's Craftsman, it's decent. And of course, your wire cutter for the uh, frequent string changes, which uh, around here happens about once a week. We all love changing strings, don't we? Nope. Uh, yeah, steel slide. I have hardly ever used this. I don't know why I keep it out, but it looks cool, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't play slide uh, hardly ever, but it's cool. I bought a capo years ago thinking I'm going to do capo stuff, and uh, I just don't. But this is very useful to fret the first fret of your guitar when you want to check the uh, relief of the neck and truss rod adjustments. So that way you don't have to kind of use, you know, two fingers, one at the first fret and one at the 15th or whatever fret by the neck. And then try to tap it with another finger. You know what I mean. So get a capo. It's super easy. Throw it on your first fret. You're done. One finger down at the at the neck. And then you can check your relief of your neck. Uh, next up, we've got the frequently used. Which I don't really need these out because I've got the multi-tool. But sometimes you just want to grab the Allen wrench itself. And so there I've got free, you know, the typical ones that I need are out here. Um... Honestly, I use this little guy the most. This one adjusts the um, screws and the bridge saddles, and I'm using that one a lot, so I keep it out. And then this little tool is a truss rod adjustment tool that came with my Harley Benton Amarok guitars. So I've got two of these. I keep one out. Don't use it very much, but it's just, you know, it's there if I need it. All right, let's get into the good stuff inside the kit itself. Now, again... This just makes sense because I had crap all over the place in different rooms and different drawers and stuff. And, and why do that? You know, it's so simple. Do this. Um, first off, obviously, you see a whole bunch of strings here. So let's go through them. I got a lot of different styles and gauges. 1152s for my acoustic guitar, which you guys have yet to see. But 1152s, I don't like them too thick or too tight on the acoustic because I'm a wimp. I don't know. Other string gauges, I have many. 9 to 42s, I was using these, well, pretty much forever, but I uh, went to Slinky Cobalts. So I like the feel of these, and they seem to last a little bit longer. They're nice and crisp and clean and high output, supposedly. But my new favorite for uh, standard tuning, 9.5 to 44s. Guys and girls, look into these. If you have not tried 9.5s yet, well, you really need to. These things are perfect. These are like the Goldilocks of strings. They're not too thick. They're not too thin. They are just right. And for you nine players, you're going to break less E strings because it's a little bit thicker, right? It lasts a little longer. Nine and a half is the way to go. And then we get into 10 to 46. These are good for your Gibson scale length. Uh, they're also good for Fender scale length too. A little bit tighter tension, but um, decent, right? A lot, of, a lot of players use 10s, 10 to 46, so got a couple of those around. This particular pack of strings, also 10 to 46, these were a freebie that came along with like a pedal or something I bought, I don't recall. Or maybe it came with my bare knuckle pickups, I don't know. Uh, yet Have yet to use those, but that's, keep them, you never know. Okay, then we get into thicker strings, 11 to 52s. I'm using these on some of my drop tune guitars. I like the feel of these a lot. Again, they're still Ernie Ball Slinkies. They're just a little bit thicker. And uh, so far, so good. like them a lot. 
Now, 11 to 48, I don't even remember <laughs> what tuning I'm using these for, but I know I used them for something. I've got a whole spreadsheet on my computer because now I can't even keep track. I've got like five different tunings going on at once. But 11 to 48, got them in the box just in case. And then we've just got some, you know, extra packs I bought a long time ago. More 10 to 46s and some freebies. Got this freebie pack from the Great House of Guitars in Rochester. That place is awesome. They give you free shit every time you buy something. I love it. All right. Strings out of the way. Let's get let's move these things. We'll put it all back later. Don't worry about it. Next up. All those little tags and, you know, user guides and warranty cards. If you're going to keep them, keep them in one place, right? Stuff from my uh, camera gear, user manuals. Like I said, it's all just there. All that stuff, keep it in one place. If you're going to keep it, keep it somewhere, you know, consolidated. Uh, increasingly unnecessary, but I still have them. A couple string winders, right? These things are great for your guitars that do not have locking tuners, which I still have a couple, so keep those around. What else do we have? Uh, a humbucker pick plate, whatever you call these things. i got a spare... I might use that on one of my guitars that you have yet to see. Whammy bars for my Ibanez guitars. Here's a couple of them. I don't know why I have spares. I don't, know, I don't understand that, but for some reason I've got two extras. So there they be. And then just random crap. So these were the string trees that came with one of my Charvel DK24s. Um... They're not roller string trees, so they don't really serve much purpose because the strings still bind on them. So I saved them. Why? I don't know. Garbage. Get it out of here. Screws to my uh, rack gear. You know, just extra stuff. Oh, here's something funny. <clears throat> I've been saving the ball ends from all my string changes for like a year now. And uh, I don't know, one day I'm going to make like a ring or a necklace out of it. Something real stupid like that. You know, whatever. I'm weird, just saving stuff. But it's all in one place. All right, this is the catch-all. This is everything. Okay, quick battery change and we're back. Um, so yeah, again, these are, this is just my catch-all baggie with like all the extra screws and crap you'll never need again, but still save it because you never know. Um, my original Fender input jack plate, which I'll probably never use again. I don't know. Somebody want to buy it for $2? Whatever. Saved it. What's left in here? Not much. A uh, couple parts. Got a pot for something. And this is, I think, a trouble bleed circuit or a capacitor. I don't know much about electronics, but I bought it for a reason at some point. Just got to figure that out. The old, an old EEPROM unit from one of my rack-mounted uh, pieces of equipment, my ADA MP2. The screen was on the fritz, so I got some nice new colored ones from uh, some guy on eBay. I don't know, pretty cool. Got extras. Now, why I'm saving these, I don't know. These were also from my ADA MP2. These are really old uh, 12AX7s. These were, I don't know, they're not the originals, but they've been in there for years. Uh, they weren't burnt out, but I Got a new set anyways, just wanted to kind of refresh all my gear at one point, so. Why I'm saving these, I don't really know, because I'm not going to put them back in. If my current tubes burn out or blow, whatever, go, what is it called, hyperphonic or whatever, hypersonic? I don't know. I'll get a new set, so. Those are just in there. Uh, if you ever need to, well, when you need to change strings or mess with the bridge on a floating trim, like an Ibanez, for instance, it's good to have a little piece of sponge, hard sponge, to kind of set behind it so that the, um, you know, the, the bottom of the trem isn't like putting full force on the inside of the, the guitar cavity. Just kind of keep it soft and in place, so that's useful. And uh, more warranty cards and uh, tags. And, of course, most important, rescue my guitars and my cat. Um, what do we got here? Ibanez. I don't know which Ibanez this was from, but uh, it's cool to have. 
Mesa from a Mesa cab. And another toolkit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, guys. Team J-Craft. For those of you that know what that means. That is a Ibanez guitar made in Japan. We've yet to see that one on the channel. Ooh, stay tuned. But that's the toolkit that comes with that particular uh, guitar. So that's nice as well. That's it. Let's see. Nice and small and easy to use. Fully functioning. Keep all your crap in one place. Nice and organized. Why I didn't think of this sooner, I don't know. But I just got this thing about a year ago and I've been playing for a couple decades. So before that, prior to that, all of this stuff was basically all over the place in my house. You know, on top of your amp. Like I said, in drawers. Um, in different rooms. Why? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. But this is so useful. If you haven't done this, man, I highly recommend it. It's just simple. I really wish I had done this years and years ago. But hey, it's never too late. And uh, now i got to figure out how to put it all back in place. Which we'll do off camera. Yeah, toolkit, guitar toolkit. Get one, guys. It's like, what, five bucks at Walmart? Come on, it's so easy. It's really great, too, because, you know, less clutter around you, especially in your work area, in your house, less clutter in your mind. Just focus on the music, right? So until next time, stay safe. Peace.